Okay, welcome everyone. So now we completed our study of the steepest descent method or, or more generally line search methods in the previous lecture. So what uh, we will now analyze is the basic issue of how fast these methods can be. Okay, so for uh, we will now discuss what uh, the, the rates of convergence or the speed of convergence of, of algorithms. Okay. So in order to do that, we need to first have a notion or a definition of what we would call uh, the rate of convergence, right? So, so let me define that for you so to begin with. So, the rate of convergence. So, let so let R k be any sequence of numbers that converge to R, say, or R star, say. So, we uh, we say that the, the, the order of convergence the of convergence the order of convergence of R k to R star is the largest value of of uh, of beta uh, you know greater than or equal to 0 such that this quantity this limit which is uh, greater than or equal to 0 this limit as k tends to infinity is finite. Okay. So, so what does this mean? It basically tells you how what is the uh, what is the largest value. Uh, 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 so, if this quantity is finite, if this limit is finite, it effectively tells you that for large enough k, r k plus 1 minus r star, the absolute difference between these two is roughly equal to some constant times r k minus r star raised to uh, raised to the largest such value of beta right so for uh, if you are uh, so if you are um, uh, so so the, the that's is that's effectively uh, what uh, this 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 particular thing is telling you so if you if you are going so for uh, for uh, for large enough k the your iterates behave in this kind of way right so if beta is um, uh, uh, if beta is uh, and to be precise here I should be taking the limb su. Okay. So, if beta is taken uh, it turns out to be 1 we say it is we, we call we say it is linear convergence convergence which means that your the distance between uh, uh, r k and uh, r star which uh, or uh, uh, so the, which means the updated distance between where you want to be and where you currently are is roughly equal to a constant times your earlier distance r k minus r star. Of course, this uh, uh, view, uh, uh, because this is convergence eventually the r k minus r star will uh, will decrease to 0 as will r k plus 1 minus r star, but what we are asking is how much how much progress are we making relative to where we were at uh, how much progress have we made in the new iteration relative to where we were in the previous iteration right and that that is what's captured uh, capturing uh, uh, being captured by the rate of convergence now if beta equals 2 we say it's quadratic convergence and this is usually very very good because if you can get if your iterates can converge quadratically that means you are making uh, uh, the progress you are making is 
uh, is is much more than uh, what you at each iteration you are you are progressing much more than you had in the previous iteration right and um, uh, if uh, if uh, uh, if if it turns out that um, beta is equal to zero, uh, sorry. If uh, if it turns out that beta is greater than sorry, not zero, not equal to zero. If it turns out that this is uh, if it's greater than zero, uh, greater than one, and if it turns out that beta is greater than one and this constant here and this constant is actually equal to 0 ok. In that uh, the constant here sorry the constant here is equal to 0 then we say it is super linear convergence. So, now to let us uh, to, to we, what we will do is uh, we look at the rates of by looking uh, to study the rates of the con of convergence we can we, I, we will look at first the, simp the simplest form of um, of a a descent method which is the simp uh, the steepest descent method and that too we will study it only on uh, only on first on quadratic functions because once you st uh, it turns out that a lot of what we want to say can um, uh, what we want to learn about the rates of convergence can be learned from just this ok. So, let us look at this function f which is half x transpose q x minus b transpose x and I am going to take q to be uh, is symmetric. and positive definite ok. The gradient of f can you can evaluate is equal to q x minus b and x star is then the unique let x star be the unique solution x star which is the minimizer of f is the unique solution I mean the minimizer x star is the unique solution of q x equals b Right now, the uh, the good thing about quadratics is that you can calculate a lot of these. Uh, the uh, you can calculate a lot of these things in closed form. So, so in fact, when we are doing this, since we are doing now, uh, if you are doing steepest descent with line search, the actual uh, the actual step that minimizes the function along uh, along a certain search direction. So, the search direction for us is p k as which is equal to minus gradient of Ok. So, the the fun the the it is you can actually calculate f of x k minus alpha grad f of x k. So, this is equal to say remember f of x k my plus alpha p k. So, we can actually calculate this in closed form closed form we can minimize um find find the alpha that minimizes this it turns out alpha so find alpha it turns and set that as alpha k so it turns out al alpha k is equal to gradient of f at x k transpose gradient of f at x k divided by transpose q times the same gradient of f at x k ok. So, the iteration then becomes x k plus 1 equals x k minus this term gradient of f at 
x k transpose gradient of f at x k divided by gradient of f at x k transpose q times gradient of f at x k the whole thing times gradient of f at x k. So, this actually gives us you can now substitute this uh, in uh, all of these expressions in uh, you know uh, in terms of this formula uh, this expression q uh, that where the gradient is equal to q x minus b and you can actually get um, you, uh, you can actually get uh, uh, the this this in a much more explicit form where x k plus 1 can be written in terms of x k. Now, it turns out that you can also therefore, using this then we can also calculate uh, ca uh, compute from here how uh, x the distance between x k plus 1 and x star and uh, and the distance between or or the difference distance between f of x minus f of x star. Let us write this as um, so, first let us define the following let us define norm q norm of x as x transpose q x. Okay. So, this is effectively as a kind of a, a skewed or a, uh, or a tilted norm with uh, where where I am taking the weighting matrix as q and now we can it is very easy to show that from here that x minus x star squared q sorry this squared this is the squared q norm this squared is actually nothing but f of x minus f of x star all right and now using this we can derive the following theorem theorem says the following now with when when the steepest when the steepest descent method is applied to the function f with exact line search. What do I mean by exact line search? By exact line search I mean that is where we are finding alpha in closed form. Right. So, this is let us call let me write this here this is what is called exact line search. The what we did in the previous lecture where we were looking for uh, uh, alphas that satisfied the wolf condition those are what, what are called inexact line search because they are not we are not actually finding the exact minimum there we are just putting conditions that al that uh, that are terminating alpha must be satisfied ok yeah. So, so with exact line search okay, then then we what do we get then we find that x k plus 1 minus x star squared in q the q norm is less than equal to lambda n minus lambda 1 divided by lambda n plus lambda 1 the whole squared times x k minus x star q norm, where what are these lambdas? These lambdas this is lambda greater than 0 greater than or dot dot greater than lambda n are the eigenvalues of q. So, these lambda 1 to lambda n they are the eigenvalues of q. Now, uh, where lambda 1 is the smallest eigenvalue lambda n is the largest eigenvalue and so now what is this relation saying this relation this q norm squared is nothing but the difference between the function value and the optimal value of the function right. So, this q no, so the uh, the difference between so if effectively this 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 here uh, this term here or this term here essentially is capturing something like an error the error that you have or the departure that you have from your optimal solution uh, 
So, the error it says dec is less than e at, at iteration k plus 1 is less than equal to this constant times the error that you had at iteration k. And you can see what is this constant? Well, this constant is uh, this. Uh, so, this constant this constant is something that depends on the eigenvalues of q. So, usually what happens in a, in a uh, in a when you run this sort of steepest descent uh, uh, st uh, steepest descent algorithm on a quadratic function like this. So, remember this was a convex quadratic function because I assumed that that my uh, my q is symmetric and positive semi definite. So, if I look at the uh, if I look at the 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 contours of of q. So, let me draw this thing here for you. So, if, uh, uh, sorry contours of f. So, this would be let us say is the out, my outermost contour. This is another contour inside. This is a another contour inside. This is another contour etcetera. Right. So, if you if you do this here is what we get. So, you start from here, go here, okay, and then you do this, and then one goes, say, okay, maybe I will draw one more contour in somewhere here in some intermediate contour. that takes us here and then another one takes us here and another one takes us here another one takes us here etc so you can see what uh, the way I have, uh, from what i have drawn these this here these are the iterates that your algorithm has produced it's starting from this particular contour this is your x uh, this is the the point x0 from here it uh, it 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 goes in the direction of um, uh, it, it goes in what is wh what is the steepest direction of steepest descent it keeps going till it encounter it till it can minimize the function along that direction that minimum gets attained here at this at the second point here so this is point x0 this is point x1 then it moves then it again goes in the direction where the uh, this is minimized uh, uh, where the it goes in the direction of the negative gradient, minimizes the function along that particular direction, gets reaches point x2, then again goes in the direction where the, uh, along the gradient now negative gradient at x2, etcetera, etcetera. Right. So this is uh, uh, this is what happens in when you when you apply steepest descent uh, steepest descent to uh, to this sort of quadratic problem now here this was a very simple problem because we actually knew where the solution also where the solution was and you could have found the solution by simply inverting the matrix q but you could uh, but we are we are trying to see what how the behavior of steepest descent method actually works now what you can observe here is the main uh, the main thing you can observe here is that the steepest descent method does tends to do this kind of zigzag it is it goes uh, uh, it keeps going zigzagging this way all the way uh, towards the solution. And the reason for that is this kind of zigzag is because of the skew that is pre that is introduced by the matrix uh, by your hessian matrix q. If the if the uh, the extent of zigzagging or uh, really depends on how how much you need to keep changing your directions of descent and that itself depends on what uh, depends on how how uh, the the how your eigenvalues are how how different your eigenvalues are so if in the simplest case if all the you as you if in the simplest case what does this say well in the simplest case if all the eigenvalues are equal what would happen if all the eigenvalues are equal where in that case it would be q would be all uh, would essentially be uh, uh, would essentially be an identity matrix say all the eigenvalues are equal to 1 in that case 
what would happen then uh, then lambda n would be equal to uh, uh, sorry I should have put a weak inequality here my mistake. In that case lambda n would be equal to lambda 1 and and in and then then this term would be 0 the term on the term in this e e uh, inequality would be 0 and x k plus 1 would be exactly equal to uh, would be exactly equal to x star. So, in that in the case when the eigenvalues are all equal the first step itself would not point in this sort of direction, but rather take you point straight towards the uh, towards the minimum the actual global minimum of the function it would point straight uh, point you to this direction directly. But because there is a skew in the function the the the, the shape of the function takes you in this sort of path it first the uh, first you go in this direction then you go in this direction then you go in this direction then this way then this way then this way etc. Okay. And the extent to which you will be end up you will end up zigzagging really depends on in general depends on the condition number or the ratio of the largest to the smallest eigenvalue right. So, as the as the condition number Uh, grows larger as the condition number grows larger the contours of the quadratic become more el elongated they tend to sort of get more stretched out the con the contours become stretched out stretched or elongated and more zigzagging occurs. Nonetheless, one thing that this result actually tells us directly is that the steepest descent method converges converges linearly in general right. So, the convergence of the steepest method is linear. So, this sort of the, uh, there is all this zigzagging, but it does converge, but uh, but it converges only linearly. If if your if your condition number is mild means close to 1, then the contours themselves would look more circular and 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 the first uh, first try itself will get you close to the solution ok. So, that the actual number of iterations would be uh, um, uh, 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 the actual number of iterations then would probably be a little lesser ok. So, but the main, so here is the main thing then that the uh, the rate of convergence depends on the extent of curvature or the or how how of how different the eigenvalues of uh, the lowest and the lar uh, largest eigenvalues are. All right. So this is uh, this is what we find. So the, let me make uh, make a note here. So the steepest descent converges linearly on this on this sort of quadratic problem. Now it turns out that uh, for for problems that are more uh, nonlinear, similar uh, sim, uh, where not necessarily quadratic, some uh, pretty much uh, similar sort of result holds. So I will just state again the theorem for you. Theorem. Suppose f from R n to R is twice continuously twice continuously differentiable and that iterates 
generated by the steepest descent method converge to x star with exact ok let us say with exact line sir. line search converge to x star at where the if I look at the hessian of f at x star this hessian is positive definite. Now, let r be um, let r be any scalar that satisfies this lambda n is a is a scalar that lies in this uh, in this interval lambda n minus lambda 1 divided by lambda n plus lambda 1 to 1 where lambda n greater than equal to dot 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 lambda 1 greater than 0 uh, are the Eigen values of the Hessian at x star. Then for k large we have f of x k plus 1 minus f of x star should is less than equal to 0 less than equal to r square times f of x k minus f of x star. Now, you can see how this why this is the case you the uh, f of x k minus f of x star is is essentially the same as this error term and this is what appeared here. So, what is happening here is that you know as you for a if you are in uh, if you are considering a twice differentiable function and you can look at the iterates that come from the steepest descent method with exact line search and suppose they converge to an x star which where uh, where the Hessian is positive definite then the function value or the error term is going down to 0 linearly linearly uh, with with uh, is, is having is showing linear convergence. This you can see and the rate uh, the, the constant outside again depends uh, depends on the um, uh, the depends on the con uh, the condition number of the hessian. Okay, the condition number of the hessian at the point where the uh, where the function converges. So, what is what is the lesson here? The, the, the lesson here is one of course, that the, the rate of convergence of, of uh, steepest descent method is linear in the best case uh, and, and second is is that the uh, quadratics uh, the study of, of the steepest descent method on the on a quadratic function gives you a good sense of what would be happening um, uh, you know for a for a for a more general nonlinear function. And the reason for that, uh, the reason for that is basically the uh, the uh, uh, you know the rate of convergence at the end of the day depends essentially on how the function, uh, how the iterates behave close to the solution because it's eventually a limiting quantity. And since the rate of convergence depends on uh, and and when you're close to the solution, a quadratic approximation of the function is a fair approximation. So quadratics tend to give you uh, a, a, a how the performance of an algorithm on a quadratic um, uh, tends to give you also how the uh, uh, the the algorithm would perform on uh, on more nonlinear type of functions right